Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Tuesday, October the 6th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. New Testament reading tonight is from Matthew chapter 9. And getting into a boat, he crossed over and came into his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven, or to say rise and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins? He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch wears away from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins. If it is, the skins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. Our Book of Concord reading tonight is from the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, Articles 9 and 10 on Baptism and on the Lord's Supper. Now, when the Augsburg Confession was first presented, and then the Roman Catholic Church uh, went through it article by article, and then they uh, spoke to what we had written in our confession. Uh, that was called the confutation of the Augsburg Confession. And both of these articles, Article 9 and Article 10, were both uh, accepted 100% the way the Lutherans had written it. Uh, Rome said they have nothing to say against uh, either our confession of baptism or the Lord's Supper. So, Article 9. Article 9 has been approved in which we confess that baptism is necessary for salvation, that children are to be baptized, and that baptism of children is not in vain but necessary and effective for salvation. 
Since the gospel is taught among us purely and diligently by God's favor, we receive also this fruit from it. In our churches, no Anabaptists have arisen. The Anabaptists means uh, rebaptizers or baptize again. Uh, the modern descendants of the Anabaptists are uh, our Amish. This is because the people have been strengthened by God's word against the wicked and the rebellious faction of these robbers. This is also among the distinct errors of the Anabaptists we condemn. They argue that the baptism of little children is useless, for it is very certain that the promise of salvation also applies to little children. It does not, however, apply to those who are outside of Christ's church, where there is neither word nor sacraments. Christ's kingdom exists only with the word and sacraments. Therefore, it is necessary to baptize the little children, that the promise of salvation may be applied to them according to Christ's command to baptize all nations, Matthew 28, 19. Just as in this passage salvation is offered to all, so baptism is offered to all men, women, children, infants. It clearly follows, therefore, that infants are to be baptized because salvation is offered with baptism. Second, it is clear that God approves of the baptism of little children. Therefore, the Anabaptists who condemn the baptism of little children believe wickedly. God's approval of the baptism of little children is shown by this. He gives the Holy Spirit to those baptized, Acts 2, 38-39. For if this baptism would be empty, the Holy Spirit would be given to no one. No one would be saved. And finally, there would be no church. This reason, even by itself, can well enough establish good and godly minds against the godless and fanatical opinions of the Anabaptists. Article 10, The Holy Supper. Article 10 has been approved in which we confess the following. We believe that in the Lord's Supper, Christ's body and blood are truly and substantially present and are truly administered with those things that are seen, bread and wine, to those who receive the sacrament. We constantly defend this belief as the subject has been carefully examined and considered. Since Paul says the bread that we break is it not a participation in the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 10.16, it would follow that if the Lord's body were not truly present, the bread is not a communion of the body, but only of Christ's spirit. We have determined that not only the Roman church affirms Christ's bodily presence, the Greek church also now believes, and formerly believed, the same. Their canon of the Mass testifies to this. In the canon, the priest clearly prays that the bread may be changed. And my page is stuck here. Their canon of the Mass testifies to this. In the canon, the priest clearly, priest clearly prays that the bread may be changed and become Christ's very body. Vulgarius, who does not seem to be an unimportant writer to us, says clearly that bread is not a mere figure, but is truly changed into flesh. There is a long commentary by Cyril on John 15 in which he teaches that Christ is bodily offered to us in the Supper. For he says... Nevertheless, we do not deny that we are joined spiritually to Christ by true faith and sincere love, but that we have no way of connection with him according to the flesh, this indeed we entirely deny. We say this idea is completely foreign to the divine scriptures, for who has doubted that Christ is in this manner a vine and we the branches, deriving life for ourselves from this? Hear Paul saying, For you are all one in Christ Jesus, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, for we all partake of the one bread. Galatians 3.28, Romans 12.5, 1 Corinthians 10.17. Does he perhaps think that the virtue of the mystical benediction is unknown to us? Since this is in us, does it not also, by the communication of Christ's flesh, cause Christ to dwell in us bodily? And a little after, therefore, we must consider that Christ is in us not only according to the habit, which we call love, but also by natural participation. We have cited these testimonies not to undertake a discussion here about this subject, for His Imperial Majesty does not disapprove of this article, but we cite them so that all who read them may more clearly discern that we defend the doctrine received in the entire Church. In the Lord's Supper, Christ's body and blood are truly and actually present. They are truly administered with those things that are seen, bread and wine and we speak of the presence of the living Christ, for we know that death no longer has dominion over him. Romans 6, 9. And tomorrow evening we will begin Article 11 on confession. The next two articles are on uh, confession, repentance, 
and how do they word it? Uh, confession and satisfaction. So we'll be discussing some things uh, that not only the Lutherans and the uh, other Reformed church bodies have uh, disagreed over, on over the ages, but also the Roman church and Lutherans. Uh, so these next two articles are uh, a little on the lengthy side again. So we'll divide those up. Uh, we'll take about a page and a half uh, per night like we've been doing. And now we join together in our confession of the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath may return to their home. Stand by all stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your son's name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace that we may withstand all trials and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to seek and to save the lost. Graciously open our ears and hearts to hear his call and to follow him by faith, that we may feast with him forever in his kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.